Hi, I'm Tanya, and I uh, just this last weekend I picked up some uh, tomatoes, peppers, and eggplants from our local Master Gardener plant sale, and I'm going to show you how to transplant those into a no-dig garden. So, um, and also share just a couple of tips. So, um, I have a bed here that I'm going to do with uh, fruiting plants. So I've got tomatoes, peppers, some eggplants down on the end, and then I'm going to plant a few seeds in that area. I'm doing a little bit of a test this year. I'm doing some tomatoes out in these beds, which don't get the greatest amount of sunlight, but it's protected from deer and whatnot. And then I'm gonna do some in the greenhouse. But for my outside tomatoes, this is my tomato bed. Um, you wanna have a strategy for supporting your tomatoes. So what I'm doing is I have uh, two rows going down this bed. Where on the end of each of the rows, I've got uh, T posts, and then I'm going to use some uh, skinny wooden poles to extend these up to about six feet. I'll just zip time there, and then um, the tomatoes are going to twine up these strings that get attached to the top, and that's going to support them and keep the fruit on the ground and keep things neat and tidy. So uh, to plant, the, transplant these tomatoes. I've measured out these strings and then I'm going to tie a knot in the end which is going to give it a little bit of an anchoring point and I'm just going to start here at the end of the row and I'll show you how we get these in the ground. So this is a, a no dig bed. It's just been prepped with a few about an inch or two of uh, compost on the top. I don't dig it in. The only digging that really happens in these beds is what digging takes place when you um, plant seeds or in this case uh, plant out your transplants. So I've kind of I've laid these out in the spacing that I want and then we're just going to dig a pretty minimal hole. And then uh, I'm going to, so I've got the knot in the string here that gets placed in the bottom of the hole and that's really all you need to anchor it. I got this tip off of, from Charles Dowding. So if you guys have been doing any no dig research, you know who Charles Dowding is. So with tomatoes, you can actually plant them deeper than the soil line. They're just going to root all the way along the stem. So I'll dig as deep of a hole as what my bed can take. And I'm going to set the tomato down in there. This one's got a bit of greenery coming off the bottom. So I'm going to go ahead and trim off any of the leaves that are going to turn out below the soil line there and then just fill it back in here get that string right up next to the stem oh. give it a good firm in because that's going to um, restore the capillary action of the soil so it just stays nice and moist and there you go, there you've got the string, give it a little tug, you can see that it's in there pretty firm. And then once I get my posts, my wooden posts that are going to go up this way, I'm going to zip tie to these T posts and then I'll do one more along the top. And then these strings will just get tied up along the top one. And then as the tomatoes grow, they're going to twist around these twines and it's going to keep everything nice and easy to get to. And that is basically it. I'm going to water these in and uh, well, actually I'm going to plant the rest of them and then I'll water them in. But you transplant the same pretty much for tomatoes or the peppers, the eggplants. I don't provide support for the peppers. I've got a little worm here. The worms just love this added layer of compost. So I added the compost on top about a week and a half ago. And uh, before that wasn't seeing a whole lot of worm activity, but now the worms are definitely coming and enjoying making good soil.
Okay, so we got all the tomatoes planted. I gave them a really good watering, and uh, now we're just gonna let them rest and start to grow. A couple things I didn't share. The reason why I plant them as deep as possible is so that you get a nice sturdy plant. They just get a little bit more stem support that way and uh, that way they get down into the soil where it stays nice and moist a lot easier. It's looking good. This one here got tipped over. The pot was tipped over when I came out this morning but it'll straighten up in no time. I might actually just go ahead and put a tie on there just to help it out but it'll follow the sun which is kind of what it did is why it's leaning over and then as soon as I get my cucumber seeds over in this part of the bed I will run my drip irrigation lines and then we just get to wait for fruit when you plant it's also a good time to come through and pinch out any suckers so you can see here is the main stem of the tomato and then in here's one of the main leaves in between each of the leaf joints it's going to put out a little sucker shoot you don't want to let those grow you just want one main stem on your tomato and so um, getting those when they're small is a lot easier than waiting until they're really big I think most of these are pretty good. I usually start my own tomato starts, um, but this year I went ahead and picked them up from the Master Gardener plant sale uh, just because we actually just moved back here onto our property uh, May 7th, so a uh, bit of a late start for starting from seed. But there's some pros uh, to that, and that being um, instead of buying 10 different types of tomatoes, I got to go and pick out from the variety and so I got one or two of each of several different kinds. That's why a lot of these look um, a lot different and in different stages of growth. Uh, but we'll get to enjoy some good variety this year and uh, looking forward to that. So bring on the tomato, basil, mozzarella salads. That'll be nice. But yeah, I think that's about it. So that's some tips to transplant your tomatoes. And I'm going to experiment with Dowding's method this season and not add any additional fertilizer other than the compost that was added to the bed and see how that goes. I like the idea of cutting down on the work and still getting it a good harvest. So thanks for watching. Hit that like button. If you like these videos and tips, go ahead and subscribe and uh, come back for more. Happy gardening. Here's that tomato trellis all finished up. We'll come around to the other side. I think you can see the strings a little bit better. The strings are coming up from each plant. Up to the top. We actually did these on eight foot poles. So T-posts in the ground with just straight, um, oh shoot, we call them pecker poles, <laughs> picked off the wood lot around the acreage and then secured with zip ties. And then we did some cross supports there. So crossbars and then all that zip tied together too. Zip tied and bailing twine. <laughs> it's our two favorite tools in the garden. So there you have it. Grow babies grow.